Peacekeeping missions only deploy to a small number of countries, and they deploy because there's enough of a political peace that the international community feels like there's a hope of moving that country forward. And in these environments, you have armed actors who are still operating outside of state control. There are former fighters both at the army level, uh, at the police level, uh, local militias stood up during the conflict, and even self-defense groups and communities. So suddenly you see seven or eight distinct organizations that need to be integrated. That's a big job. The longer you have uh, civil disruption in a country, the longer and the harder it is to repair the damages that are left behind. We know, of course, that justice and security deficits have been the reason for relapse into conflict in some peacekeeping contexts. You find that in many conflicts, conflict arose because armed personnel have, instead of protecting people, have been victimizing them. So the challenge is how do we redesign the social contract to make sure that these armed forces respond to constitutional order? For a peace to move on, you need support to rule of law. You need governance to begin and take hold. And the question we ask on the rule of law, police, corrections, prisons, is what are the critical elements that a government or civil society needs help with coming out of a conflict? What's necessary to have the peace remain stable and secure? If you want a system to develop, you have to do it holistically. Uh, you cannot develop police without developing prosecution. You cannot develop prosecution without developing the court system. And the same with correction, these institutions are interlinked. It doesn't make sense arresting criminals when there are no prisons to put them in. Arresting criminals when there are no courts to try them. So you need to ensure that justice and security are provided uh, as part of peacekeeping so that there is no relapse into conflict. So we first need to secure the environment to allow development to take place. And this security means not only providing physical security of the people, we need to make sure that those who offend it, those who go against these laws, must face the consequences by a well-structured justice sector itself. Within the, the, the peacekeeping operation, of course you have the military part, the blue helmet that everyone know, but you have also another part that is essential uh, in building a peace and sustaining peace. It's the rule of law and security institution. You cannot build security without at least basic viable policing. Uh, you have to institute courts and make a prison system uh, functional. At the same time, you have to clean uh, the fields and roads of mines and exploded ordnance um, and start removing weapons from the population. And we have to address the fundamental issue, how the security sector is managed, whether it's professional, accountable, transparent, um, and is serving the population first and foremost. So frequently missions are tasked to bring with them police, corrections, judicial officers, and part of what would be a rule of law team to help a government move forward. This is particularly tough in areas where there aren't always well-built roads uh, and operating environments where remote locations are hard to reach. And so a lot of the countries today that peacekeeping deploys to face that kind of challenge. But having then the right people who can assess what a government's capabilities are is vital. So take, for example, that poor, ordinary woman who has been raped in Eastern Congo. What would it take to make her feel safer? Imagine if the soldiers have new uniforms, new guns, they dress more sharply. Do you think that would make that woman feel safer? No. Because if she doesn't feel that there's a way of controlling them, actually, you're making her feel more threatened. So the element of what makes her feel safer must include laws that she knows these people have to obey. If they don't obey, there will be consequences. It's a very powerful thing. There's no other way that I see expressed the legitimacy and credibility of the international system, volunteering to come forward, provide personnel of all stripes and service, 
to help work with local parties to a peace. And that, in a way, is the power of the UN. It sends out, we hope, innovators, brave people who can constantly do that. So we think it's a really invaluable, very important tool. And we've seen its role around the world, trying to bring a stable peace to countries that otherwise wouldn't have a good chance of that. Peacekeepers are early peace builders that help national authorities rebuild their rule of law after a conflict. This is critical to long-term stability and peace.